you like. Hi everybody, happy Tuesday. Um, it's a bit of a strange day today, isn't it? I can't decide whether it's warm or not. Sun's out one minute, now it's all cloudy again, but never mind. Um, what are we going to do today? We can do some crochet today. I'm uh, just going to give everybody obviously a few minutes just to come online and then we're going to do some crochet. Um, nice and busy in the shop. We've had lots of orders and all through, which is fabulous. Um, what else are we doing? Oh, there's a new raffle up. Um, so it's quite a few have gone already, actually. I think there's about 18 or so have gone already. So it's man's best friend. Lots and lots of pupper dogs. Lots and lots of dogs for you to choose from. So that's on the website, just like the other ones. Uh, say exactly the same as last time. So five pound a, 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 a name, a, a puppy and then it's a 200 pound price so that's on that went live yesterday um there's two left on the zoom class as well um you would need to call me now um and i could hopefully get the kit into the post by four today so if you do want to join us uh, if there's anyone else who wants to do it um we will do some more at the weekends as well um i know this one's on a thursday but we will do some on the weekends too okay because i know some people are working during the week but i've had to kind of do it with my availability this time um so um so that one's third that's happening thursday um what have we got we've got block of the week tomorrow so i'll put the cutting instructions up later for you um we'll do that um so you can sew along if you want to but obviously as per usual you can you know just watch and uh sew afterwards um and then thursday we're going to do some animal panels so i'm going to show you how to do those with a really nice big oxford edge just to make a little bit different to do with a with a cushion so um so yeah that's everything so who's coming online today groups we've got sean we've got heather we've got Anne. lovely we've got marion grace oh Sheena. fab lovely <laughs> lovely lovely hi everybody thank you for joining us um so i'm going to show you how to do i mean these stitches can be used for absolutely anything um but i thought i'd just show you some little crochet dish cloths because um, I've made lots and lots of these and I use them in the house. I've given them away to people. My mum keeps requesting more of them because she really likes them. They're brilliant um, and obviously they're just a little bit more environmentally friendly um, than you know buying sponges and, and you know, uh, J-clothy type things um, because you can just chuck them in the washing machine you know, and rewash them and use them over and over again. So we're gonna, um, there's hundreds of patterns out there as well. Um, I will post the links for these two and post some links for um, some other ones as well later on. But um, I'm going to show you two of my favourites, which give like a sort of a bit of a textured feel to it. Um, you can just do these in the corner to corner. You know, we did that back a few weeks ago, just the corner to corner. You can make these in that. That's a nice textured one for a cloth. They don't have to be dishcloths either. They can be like flannels, like washcloths. Um, they're brilliant for that too. Um, we're going to use 100% cotton yarn um, for them. I've put a load of cotton yarns onto our website or rather Alex did for me yesterday um, so we've got this some King Cole ones which is what I'm using here um, with um, they've got like a, a fleck in them they've got a, a little coloured fleck through them um, so there's two we've got a couple of colours left in those those are on the website um, and they they do wash they're 100% cotton and like I said you can boil wash them they're brilliant and we've also put a load of um, Sirdar 100% cottons on but they're solid colours um, and there's lots of different colours, but they work just exactly the same. Again, you can boil wash them and, and you know, sterilise them. I very often chuck them in the dishwasher, in the top rack of the dishwasher, um, and rather than having to put them through the washing machine. So, um, so I'm going to show you the two little stitches that I like. Like I said, you can use them for anything. Okay. So this one, hopefully Drew will be able to see that you'll be able to see this. This is called lemon peel, and this is mega mega easy little stitch. Um, but it's called a lemon peel stitch and it does give it just a very slightly textured raised finish which is great for if you're wiping down and this one is called a crunchy stitch <laughs> don't know why it's called a crunchy stitch it just is but this one is slightly sort of more shell like you can almost like shells like skew with shells on this one um, so I'm going to show you both stitches as per usual, they're not my patterns. I don't write crochet patterns. So I will put the links for these um, patterns but um, on the web Facebook page. But they are freebies. Okay. So we are going to start with the lemon peel because that's really, really easy. Really, really nice and easy. So um, I did those two last night out of this ball. That's a 100 gram ball. Um, I'd probably get another two out of this. So you'd easily get four, four cloths this size 
you could of course make them bigger if you wanted to or smaller um, but four cloths that size easily out of a ball of, of 100 grams okay so how are you all how is everybody um, do say hello and talk to me while I'm doing this little bit <laughs> okay so I'm going to do a slip knot to start now the lemon peel is worked over any even amount of stitches okay I did um, 20 for this one okay which is quite a nice size I don't think it really needs to be much bigger I mean then haven't I haven't bothered to block them or anything you could block them if you really wanted to make them square but you know they're going to be chucked in the water and mopping up spag ball and stuff so <laughs> um i don't bother to block them but that is i find that that's quite a nice handy size for for wiping down okay so we're going to chain 20 stitches to start and you all you all hang on, i'm going to move this light so hopefully it's right over my hands so that you guys can see so with a chain right over and pull through so that's one two Sheena asked what size Three. hook are you using? Um, I've got a four mil hook because this is double knit weight. You would just match whatever weight it is. Most cottons tend to be double knit. Um, so I've used a four mil hook. But depending on you know, if your tension's really tight, you can go up to say a four and a half or a five. If it's really, really loose, you can go down. But I tend to use what it says on the band, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six seven eight nine ten any other questions there tina if do you sell block boards in the shop we don't no we don't sell block boards um one of the um cheapest and easiest ways of doing it is you know those foam jigsaws you can buy for kids you know like floor mat foam jigsaws you can if you go to like one of the sort of cheapy shops like b&m or home bargains biology that type of thing um you can normally get them for like you know five or six quid for a pack of four and they make it brilliant because they're foam. You can just pin into the blocking blocks then. That works really, really well. So I forgot where I am. Here we go. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, ooh, 18, 19, 20. Okay, so you're going to end up with any even number. That doesn't look very big at the moment, but actually that came out fine once it sort of stretches up. Okay, you're then going to add one more on for luck, okay, because we're not going to go into that first stitch, we're going to go into the second one. So no matter how many even numbers you got, you start with, you add on one chain, okay? And then in the second chain from the hook, so not this one here, this one here, okay, we're going to put a double crochet. So doubles straight into the hook, uh, into the stitch, and pull up. So I've got two on my hook, and three. And then in the next one along, I'm gonna put a treble. So I'm gonna put a treble into that. So I've wrapped first, pulled up, so I've got three, wrap through two, wrap through two. And then I'm gonna do a double. So in, pull up, and through, and then a treble, so wrap, in, pull up, through two, through two, okay, and then a double, and that's all it is. So it's double, treble, double, treble, all the way around. So wrap, in, pull up, through two, through two, and then a double, so in, oh, in, pull up, through both. Okay, so I'm just going to work my way along the chain, Ooh, not dropping the wool on the floor, <laughs> um, doing double treble, double treble all the way along to start with, okay? So I'm going to put a treble in there. So just while I'm working my way through, any questions there, Drew? Lisa says, are you using cotton? Yes, yeah, I'm using 100% cotton, these ones. So um, like I said, I've added a load of cottons to the um, uh, website, or rather Alex did, yesterday this one that i'm using here is the king cole candy soft cotton which is quite nice it's got like a little fleck they do it in different colors um so um but we've got solid cottons there you could even use the little sirdar happy cottons not the chenilles but the happy cottons as long as it's 100 percent cotton um for sort of flannels and, and dishcloths it works brilliantly okay 
because it's um this is a really good way as well if you've been like toy making or something like that it's a good way of using up all those little bits of wool because you could just do stripy ones you know use up all your bits and go backwards and forwards and you do stripy ones so this is the lemon peel stitch that we're doing and it's literally the first row is just double treble into each one okay into each chain all the way along so it is incredibly simple so there's my double and then treble to end okay like that so i've got a row of double treble double treble double treble all the way along my chain and then i'm going to turn okay so i'm turning and now in order to get a little bit of height i'm going to chain one at the beginning and then this very first stitch here okay can you see this little stitch here that very first one here i'm going to do exactly the same so it's a double and then a treble and i'm going to do exactly the same all the way along so it's always always the same repeat lemon peel meg as are you working into the back of your foundation chain no i'm not lovely i just work straight into the top of the chain you can work into the bump if you want to you can work into the bump of the chain but there's no need to not with uh, dishcloths i'm just working straight through the chain okay so um actually let me just take that little bit back so you can see if you were a little bit late joining okay so i'll just take that back so that was a double there Cara's waving high as well hi Cara. okay so you can work into that bump there but there's absolutely no need to for this okay so I've done a double so I'm just working into that the top of the chain there that foundation chain okay I'm doing a treble and then double in the next one so into that bit of the chain there double and then treble in this one okay yeah it's um the working into the foundation bump is quite nice because it does give you a really nice uh, neat edge but i'm going to put doubles you know i'm going to do a line of like a border on it anyway um so if i grab this one you can see i've just gone all the way around this with a little border anyway so there's there's no need to okay so when i get to the end i'm going to turn and because we ended with a treble by starting with a double again you're offsetting each of the stitches so in that first stitch there make sure I'm going catching both sides of the the loops I'm going to put a double so it's the easiest pattern in the world to remember because it's literally double treble double treble each row okay but you're actually offsetting them um, because of you've got an even number so a treble into this next one here like that and then a double into the next one which is that one there you know and if you worry about working in rows you know you can put a stitch marker on each end if you want but actually if you think you're always going to start with a double you should have enough stitches if you end with a treble <laughs> okay so double you know, just roll off the more yarn and a treble into that one there and I'm just working my right way into every stitch all the way along. This is incredibly easy to do, okay, but it does give a really nice textured stitch. So double into this next one. There we go. And then a treble into the next one. Hmm. Okay. Jenny said, said B said you should never break or um or you must never break the chain. Fleetwood Mac. Right? <laughs> yeah, oh, I love I love that album. I think that would be my Desert Island album. Rumors. I can just listen. I know that's a bit of a cliche, but I can just listen to that over and over and over. Love that album. Okay, so that was a treble. So there's a double here, and I just want to show you on this end here. So I'm that's a double. So I've, this bit here is a stitch. That's where you turned. Okay, it's very easy to miss that one. But you want to make sure you get it otherwise you end up with losing a stitch each time and you end up it coming coming in so there's my treble on the end okay and can you see you're already getting that lovely sort of textured feel to it okay so again i would turn and oh sorry groups okay. chain one to get my height and then to this very first stitch here double and treble and double 
and treble and you're just doing that all the way along okay it's not complicated it's a really nice easy one particularly if you're like on a car journey and you just want something to do in the car or you know sat watching tv it's that repetition of double treble into every chain and you get this lovely um lovely textured stitch okay any other questions there anybody else there today drew mm -hmm. There we go. So I'm just going to get to the end so that I can show you the next stitch, okay? Because um, I'm just going to, you could mix and match them. There's nothing stopping you doing a couple of rows of one and then a couple of rows of the next one. Um, there we go. It's a double, treble. <laughs> Nearly wanted to do another treble then. My, my fingers went to wrap without realising it. And then treble. And then double into that one and treble like that and double. and then make sure we catch that very last stitch and do my treble okay so that's it lemon peel stitch really really nice and easy can you see how that's if I show you on you can see how that texture starting to come and you see as it builds up you get this lovely textured stitch okay so that's lemon peel Okay, so then I'm going to show you the, the crunchy one, the crunchy stitch. Okay, we're going to do a few rows of this just so you can see how this comes out. And again, I quite like this one because it gives it, it's a little bit more lacy, gives a bit more, when I get a bit bored of doing these, I do this one because uh, it's just, <laughs> you know, when you do a stitch over and over and over, you won't get a bit bored of it. Well, I do anyway, attention span of a gnat. So um, I quite like this because it's, if you're using it for wiping, it's, it's got a bit more texture to it. So crunchy stitch like I said I will put a full put the link to the full written pattern I just want you to uh, to see this so with crunchy stitch you would start by just doing a row of doubles into every one of your chains to give you a little foundation okay and it's worked over any set of three now I know this is I've done this over two I'm going to bodge it at the end so that I I don't have to do a chain and you don't have to look watch the boring bit okay but again the pattern's really really easy to follow so with this one I'm going to go one two chains to get up the height okay and in this very first stitch here okay I'm going to add hang on two seconds I'm just going to scrub some more wool off because it's all getting tangled up there we go so that chain is acting as a treble so I'm going to add just one treble at the beginning like that to start off and then a double okay in that get oh, caught my wool there we go in there so I've got a chain which is pretending to be a treble another treble and then a double and then I skip two stitches so one two and in this third stitch along we're gonna put a double oh, hang on I, there's a little hang on we just I've caught Put the yarn there we go and split the yarn it was playing up okay so skip two and in the third one I'm gonna put treble and another treble so I've got two trebles in the same hole and then a double all into that one hole okay so there's my double like that and then I'm gonna skip two so one two and in my third one along I'm gonna put two trebles so one two and then a double okay and then skip two one two and then my third one exactly the same so the nice thing about these dishcloth patterns is they are very very repetitive so you don't have to worry about remembering you know complicated rows or anything like that they are really really repetitive so one two and in the third one, I'm going to put two trebles and one double. One, two, and a double. Okay, and it doesn't look much of the first couple of rows, but after once you've done a couple, like you'll see how it's coming along. Okay, and then skipped one, two, and in the third one, got one, two trebles, and then a double. And skip two, one, two, and skip the third one. So that one there. Got 
two trebles and a double like that and then I should actually, ha actually have one more stitch because obviously I'm doing this as a little sample one it should be done over threes so put in that last one there I'm just going to add in a double okay like that and then we're going to turn okay so can you see that those little shells are starting to appear so we're going to chain two to get started so one two like that okay and in this very first one here I'm going to add another treble because the chain acts as the treble okay and a double crochet like that and then I'm going to skip two one two and into the third one which is actually the double from the previous round I'm going to put two trebles and again it's the set that same repeater pattern it's just about where you put them okay and a double and skip two one two and in that one there again so any questions there Drew any comments uh, Caroline said well I've uh, I've never mastered crocheting and driving at the same time. Clever you. <laughs> oh, when I'm a passenger. <laughs> yeah, that would be a feat, wouldn't it? I think there's probably some points on your license you try doing that. So skip two and into that third one. Going to go treble. Um, Mary says my foundation row is a bit snack. Many tips. Um. With your foundation row, so if you find, so your foundation chain or your foundation row, with a foundation chain, they tend to be a lot tighter than the rest of the work because we tend to pull tighter. So you can always go up a hook to loosen it off or you can go right down a hook size. So instead of using, say, a four, maybe go down to a three and a half or a three to do if it's, if your foundation chain is too um, loose, go, go down a hook size and then when you start the actual work, go back up to what it suggests. Um, don't be sort of scared of playing with your your hook sizes, depending on um, on how you crochet, because uh, it's just the same as like knitting and all. Everybody has different tensions, so it's only a guideline. So um, the the hook size. So skipping two and into that third one. I'm gonna go one, two trebles like that, and then a double. Okay. And we've and got B watching two. as well. My B. Ah, hi Beth. One, two, like that. And then a double, like that. And then into this very last stitch here, we're just going to put a double. Okay. And that's just to anchor that last shell down. So, can you, so ignore this bit here because that was the previous stitch. Can you see how you're getting this lovely sort of texture start to happen? So I'll do another couple of rows of that one just so you've kind of got it. Um, get that thread off there, come on. <laughs> so we were sewing last night. So two chains, so one, two, like that to get my height. And then one treble, because the chain acts as the first treble. And then a double right in that beginning bit. And then going to skip two, so one, two. And in the third one here, so I'm skipping two stitches. That's where I'm going to put two trebles. So, like I said, these are incredibly simple stitches. Okay, really, really easy, repetitive stitches. But actually, that's kind of what you want from dishcloths, isn't it? You want them to be to be you know, make them be able to make them fast, and uh, you don't need them to be all fancy. But these are these are nice stitches. Okay, so I'm putting two trebles in there, and then a double, and then skipping two. So one, two. There's my next one. So treble, treble, double. Remember the double's just not without the wrap, okay? And then along to the next one. So one, two, and there's my next hole there to go into. That's the third one along. So treble, treble, and double, like that. Okay, and then keep going. So again, skip two and go treble, treble, and double. Okay. Um, I said earlier on as well, um, corner to corner 
works really really well can, <laughs> my wool is getting further and further along <laughs> further and further away from me corner cor corner to corners work really well for these two this uh you would just you know oh, I, I might show you that in a second actually and then go right in there like that and just do your double to finish so hopefully, let me, don't look at that bit because that was the previous stitch. Hopefully you can see you're getting these lovely um, shells appearing, which look like that. Okay, so that's what they call the crunchy stitch. Okay, so lemon peel is that sort of slightly texturised one like that. And then that's your crunchy stitch. So hopefully you can see that that's starting to come like this. You can see the same sort of shell happening. Okay. So, those are two really, really nice and simple, very repetitive little stitches that make fabulous dishcloths and face cloths, okay? I would absolutely use 100% cotton. Um, acrylic just doesn't absorb as you're either washing your face or washing the kitchen sides or whatever. It doesn't absorb like cotton does. Um, what time is it, Drew? How are we doing? Mm, 25 past. Um, do you want me to just show you again very quickly the corner to corner? Because that makes really good dishcloths. Um, for those of you who didn't join us weeks and weeks ago, actually, um, I will just show you the start of corner to corner so that you can, um, you can also use this method for, for them. Just because we've got a few minutes. Oh, so we've got fluff everywhere today. Tina said, uh, sorry, Tina said, please, uh, do as I've never tried corner to corner. Yeah, but that's all right, lovely. See loads of people posting on it, uh, on Fab about it. Yeah, there is, um, on our YouTube channel, there is a, a full, like we did a whole um, whole Facebook Live on Corner to Corner. So there is one on our Facebook channel um, if you want to re-watch. Um, not Facebook channel, YouTube channel, sorry. <laughs> um, but um, just a little reminder about that actually, ladies. If, um, if you're bored and you want to help us a little bit, if you just pop over to the YouTube channel and like some of the videos for me, that really does help. <laughs> you don't even have to watch them for very long, you know, 10, 10, 15 seconds. I mean, you might want to watch longer, but if you like them, if obviously you don't have to, you can unlike them if you don't, if you don't like it. But if you like them, it does kind of help us as a business. Um, so yeah, that would be cool. If you've got like, you know, 10 minutes and you want to pop over there, that would be lovely. <laughs> All helps with the marketing. <laughs> so, Corner to corner. So we're going to start, I'm just going to do it very, very briefly for you, okay? We're going to start with a slip knot and we're going to chain six to start with. So, one, two, three, four, five, and six, okay? So if you think about this being number one, two, three, four, five, six, remember you never count the stitch that's on your hook. So we're going to put a treble into number three. So one, two, three. Okay, so we're going to pop a treble into there, like that. And then we're going to put a treble into number two. There we go, like that. And then a treble into number one, which is the very first chain. And what you end up to start with is this little, like, square block. Okay. We're then going to turn, so we're going to flip it like that, and we're going to do the next row. So the thing with corner to corner is you're working diagonally across. So this is actually like the bottom, the bottom row here, and then we're going to be working like this. Okay. So always this is a start of a row. Always at the start of a row, while you're increasing, you're going to start with six chains. So one, two, three, four, five six and we're going to put a treble into three two and one so three two like that and one which is that one there hopefully you're getting all this guys Oh, excuse me, guys. Um, oh, I've got somebody at the door. <laughs> Drew's just going to have to run a second because we've got some uh, deliveries. So, sorry. <laughs> I'm just going to have to talk to you a second because you won't be able to see this. I'm just going to check the door. I don't know if the... Ah, oh, that's all right. Josh is there. Josh heard it, which is good. <laughs> so, okay. So, we've done that one, two, and three. 
okay three trebles into three two and one sorry and then what you want to look for at this first little block here can you see this space here that the chain three made can you see this one there because of those because of how we went into because we chained six and we went into three two and one you end up with this little space so what i'm looking for is the space on the next block along because i want to pull this down to join so i'm going to slip stitch into that space so slip stitch like that and then we're going to chain three. One, two, three. And then I'm going to put three trebles into this space. So, one, two, and three. And that's my second row done. So I've now got two little blocks like that. So I'm going to turn it. And it's the start of a row. So I'm going to need to put six on. Hopefully this is, everyone's following me so far. Okay, so start of the row is always six chains. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. And then I'm going to treble into three, two, and one. So into three, into two, and into that first chain number one okay like that so i've made another little block i now need to bring that block in line with these so i find the little chain three space on the next block along and slip stitch in so there we go like that and now for the rest of the blocks it's chain three so chain one two three so some more wool off and then three trebles so one two and three and then you want to bring this block into line so i'm going to find the chain space on the next one along like that and slip stitch and chain three to get my height one two three and three trebles are you all okay with this so far? Is this making sense, ladies and gents? Two, three. Okay, and that's row three done. So I've done three blocks this time. And then we turn, and it's on to a new row. Okay, so what new rows always six. So one, two, three, four, five, six chain. And then I'm going to go into, because I want to go into three, two, and one. So th into the third chain, into the second chain. And it's all done with trebles. Ooh, let's get some more yarn off. And then into the first chain, like that. And then I need to bring this one into line. So I'm going to find the chain space on the next block along and slip stitch like that so it's pulled that one in and then we're on to th chain three so one two three and then there's your trebles one two three and then this one needs to be pulled in so you're going to find the next chain space along and slip stitch and one two Three. I'm going to put three trebles in there. Any comments there, Drew? Just mm. why I put these three trebles in. No. Everybody okay? It is very repetitive, but it's also very relaxing to do this stitch. It's one of those real gentle ones. It's all about counting in through it, counting three. So I'm going to bring this one in line. So I'm going to go into here and slip stitch and chain three. One, two, three, and then put three trebles into that one there okay Ooh, don't split yarn Ooh, sorry drew <laughs> it's all right drew so close to try and get the close-ups on my hands i keep hitting the uh, side of the gimbal with the uh, of his toy with my fingers two and three okay so can you see it's gradually getting if i turn that now it's gradually getting bigger okay so this was the first row and then I did that row and then this row and this row. So the start, start of every row 
you chain six and then you treble back into three, two and one. And then you join into those little spaces with a chain three, slip stitch and then chain three, three trebles, slip stitch, chain three, three trebles and then on the last one. And you keep going till it's as wide as you want it to be. OK, once you've got it as wide as you want it to be, you then have to decrease. Now, we have, um, can I, I could show you how to decrease on this. It's quite little. But so say this was as wide as I wanted to, it to be. Maybe I'm making really, really, I mean, I'm making dishcloths for mice. Really, really tiny little ones. OK, so at the beginning of the row, I don't want to add another block by chaining six. I want to leave this as the top corner. So I need to get along to this bit here. So that I can keep, can you see this would be the sides of the square? That's as wide as it's ever going to be. This is the top and the bottom of the square, and this is the side. So I'm going to slip stitch along till I find that, till I get into that chain three space. Okay, I'm hoping this makes sense. Like I said, there is a much fuller video on, um, on our YouTube channel. So I'm just going to slip stitch along those stitches there. Don't split yarn. And into that one like that and then into that chain three space because I don't want to grow it that chain six at the beginning of each row is growing it by one block each time this time I don't so now I've got the bottom the side and this this will be the top I've just moved it round to the chain three space and then I'm going to go chain three one two three and then three trebles so one two and three and you continue with the row exactly the same. So find that next one, slip stitch in, chain three, one, two, three, Ooh, three, and three trebles. Is everybody okay, Drew? Any comments? No, the comments are not showing. Uh, comments are not showing again. Uh, the, Sorry, the, girls, the, if you're asking, ladies and gents, if you're asking questions, we do have Facebook is very. Uh, very fickle about when it wants you to talk to me or not. <laughs> there we go. And then the next one along like that. And one, two, three. And three trebles. One, two, and three. And then I want to bring that in line, bring that into that one there. So slip stitch in. But I don't want this side to get any bigger either, so I wouldn't do my last block this side. Can you see? And that started to to break the make the little square, and I would turn it. Okay, I'd slip stitch along into here, and then do my chain three, three trebles, chain three, three trebles. But you're not going to do one on the end in order to fill in these blocks. So. I'm hoping that's okay, girls and guys, that that kind of just very briefly explains corner to corner. We have, like I said, we've got a full hours tutorial, um, one of these that we did back a few weeks ago on our YouTube channel, okay? So that's dishcloths. That's the stitches I like to use. Like I said, there are hundreds and hundreds of patterns out there for different ones. Um, I, I, these are just, I just picked two that I do regularly. So we've got, like we said, got the little lemon peel one, which is incredibly simple. It's just double, treble, double, treble, double, treble, all the way along, and then same backwards and forwards. And then the crunchy stitch one, which was that two, two trebles and a double into each stitch and then skip two and over you go. But you could do them corner to corner and then just put a board around afterwards. Okay. Any questions? Anything there that um, you'd like to ask me? I'd like me to go through again before I pootle off. Uh, Tina says, thank you, we'll find you there, yeah, find the YouTube channel. Find the, yeah, yeah. if you want a, a, like a, a, one in much more detail, because that was quite quick, but in much more detail, then um, try the YouTube one, okay? Sandra says, very clever, just have to remember it. I'll pop the links onto Facebook for you guys, okay, so you'll be able to have the patterns there, or just listen to me back. <laughs> Uh, Linda says thanks again. Okay, fabulous. No problem, girls and guys. Um, I will put the cutting instructions up for tomorrow. So along um, for the block of the week. Um, I'll put that up later on this afternoon so you can get cut in for that. Um, 
and I'll put the links up for these so I'm back tomorrow um, with a garden trail block I'm doing um, which is it's quite nice quite nice one uh, Kathy Lum has also sent me a link to a site which has got some yummy blocks on it so I'm going to spend some time researching that this evening and having a look for some new ones for you as well so um, cool um, if there's nobody else uh, no other questions or anything I'm going to go back over the shop and carry on doing some bits and I will see you all tomorrow at one um, yeah bye ladies and gents see you soon stay safe